It's been almost two weeks since the announcement of Pokemon Legends ZA, and the internet is still rampant with speculation on what exactly this game is going to be about. People have been speculating on possible new Pokemon and features, predicting the game's starter trio, and making videos theorizing about the potential timeline and story. This is not one of those videos. This is not a theory. You'll find no mere speculation here. For you see, I've spent the past week combing through this trailer and researching everything from urban development to the real world history of France to Norse creation myths to uncover every secret of this game that I can. And though I have never played the game, nor do I have any insider information, I can say with 100% confidence that this video is not a prediction. It's a spoiler. This is the entire story of Pokemon Legends ZA solved. Richard, hit that intro. Alright, for anyone who hasn't watched the trailer yet, it's super short, but here are the main important details. Most of the trailer shows Pikachu running through a 3D rendering of a blueprint. We see paperwork for something called the Lumio City Urban Redevelopment Plan, and the game is called Legends ZA. That's pretty much all we have to go on. We also learned from a tweet by Nintendo of America that this entire game will be set within Lumios City itself, not the whole Kalos region. This trailer has brought about two main questions. The first, what's the deal with this urban redevelopment plan? The main prevailing theory that I've seen online is that this game has to do with rebuilding Lumios after the devastation caused by the ultimate weapon. For anyone who's not familiar or needs a refresher, I mean, it has been 11 years since X and Y came out after all. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, let that sink in. Yeah, we're old. In the original X and Y, a man named AZ told us a story about a great Pokemon war in Kalos 3,000 years ago. This man's Floette was drafted into the war and ended up dying. So the man built a machine that had the power to bring his Floette back to life. But AZ was still so angry with the world for putting his Floette in danger in the first place, so he turned his machine into the ultimate weapon and fired it on Kalos, devastating the whole region and single-handedly ending the war. After watching the trailer, a lot of people think that this game is going to be set in the aftermath of that war. And this urban redevelopment plan is how you're going to rebuild this city from its ruins. But as cool as that may sound, it does bring up a couple of timeline issues. We know that the great war of the story took place 3,000 years before the events of X and Y, putting it somewhere circa the year 1000 BC. That's significantly older than any city in real world France. Uh, heck, it's older than France. If the Kalos region is anything like the real country it's based on, then Lumio City almost certainly did not exist yet at the time of the Great War. And even if it did, the blueprints included in this plan are super advanced. They show very modern looking buildings. Heck, the Eiffel Tower is in here. Certainly not the type of city that you could imagine building at a time before the Romans. So if this game is about rebuilding Lumios after it was destroyed by the ultimate weapon, for all this to make sense, then Lumios would have had to lay in ruins for several thousand years before they rebuilt it, or the game would have to involve some sort of time travel mechanic where you like slowly rebuild the city over millennia. I mean, it's possible that this is the direction Game Freak could go in for sure, but I think there's a far more likely scenario. 
See, after doing some research, it turns out that urban redevelopment plans are a very real thing that cities do from time to time. They are generally large-scale public works projects or a series of projects to improve more run-down parts of the city. They can do all sorts of things from building new residential and commercial districts to renovating open spaces, improving public infrastructure, stuff like that. Sometimes these plans are good, like adding more green spaces to a city. Sometimes they're not so good, like gentrifying lower income neighborhoods to jack up property taxes. Importantly though, a redevelopment plan does not carry the connotation of rebuilding. That sort of work would be categorized under a reconstruction plan, which has to do with repairing what was lost after a natural disaster or a war. Reconstruction has to do with rebuilding something that was destroyed. Redevelopment is about improving something that already exists. It seems like a minor distinction, but if Pokemon has done their research, then it means that Lumios probably won't start as a pile of rubble. Despite all the intrigue this trailer has created around them, urban redevelopment plans aren't a very rare thing in the real world. Loads of cities have undertaken large-scale renewal projects from Boston to Singapore to, oh yeah, Paris. In the mid 1800s, the city of Paris was experiencing a massive population boom, growing from a mere 500,000 people at the turn of the century to over 1 million by 1846. However, as Paris is one of France's oldest cities, a lot of the city's infrastructure was still carried over from the medieval era and simply was not equipped to handle this amount of people. Quaint neighborhoods turned into crowded slums with people practically living on top of each other, diseases like cholera and typhoid ran rampant, and the sanitation infrastructure was... Well, they didn't have any of that. So, in 1853, the then Emperor of France, Napoleon Bonaparte, yep, that Napoleon, saw the state of the city and thought, man, this place sucks. So, he hired his main man, Jorge Eugene Hussman, a city planner, to fix the place up. With the blessing of his emperor and several billion dollars at his disposal, Hussman basically remodeled all of Paris. He greatly expanded the city both outwards by annexing the surrounding suburbs and upwards by lining the streets with new multi-story stone buildings. He built new sewage and water supply systems to combat the rampant disease and he created the intricate pinwheel network of boulevards that Paris is famous for today. Based on what we've seen so far, this seems like the most likely era for this game to be set in. Lumios won't be a pile of rubble, but it won't be looking too hot either. It'll start small, cramped, and overcrowded. You'll play as some sort of surveyor tasked with exploring the surrounding landscape to help the architect of this redevelopment plan find the best way to expand Lumio City. And since this is a Pokemon game, there'll probably be some big focus on finding ways to integrate the surrounding nature and Pokemon into the city itself. This would make a lot more sense from a timeline perspective. If this game is set at around the same time as the real world redevelopment of Paris, that would put it around 1850 to 1860. As it so happens, the first Legends game, Legends Arceus, takes inspiration from the early Meiji period of Japan that began in 1868, around the same exact time. Also, just take a look at a map of Lumios from the trailer. Got it? Got it? See it there? Okay. Now take a look at a map of Paris post-renovation. They're the same picture. To me, this seems pretty cut and dry. This game is going to be heavily inspired by the real-world renovation era of the city of Paris. But at the start of the video, I alluded to the fact that there are two big questions from this trailer. The urban redevelopment plan is one, the 
other comes not from the trailer itself, but from the game's very title. The names and logos for the original X and Y are clearly based on the mascot legendaries. Eveltal is a big red Y, Xerneas is an X, I'm kind of, I guess, with the little antlers at the top, and Zygarde is a Z with a black and green color scheme and a hexagon motif. But then, what's the deal with the A? If the pattern holds true, then this should be hinting at a fourth legendary Pokemon, but who might that Pokemon be, and how do they tie into this whole redevelopment plot? To find the answer, we need to take a little detour to our friends in the north and learn a bit about Norse mythology. If you weren't aware, the legendary Kalos trio is based on the Norse story of Yggdrasil the World Tree that carries the nine realms on its branches. According to the myths, several legendary animals call this tree home. There is the great eagle Hresfelger that lives atop the branches, four stags named Dane, Dvalin, Dunir, and Durathwar that live at the base, and the serpent named Nidhogg that shelters at the roots. God, you Norse people gotta come up with better names. These creatures were the inspiration for Iveltal the bird, Xerneas the stag, and Zygarde the serpentine dragon. But, as it turns out, there is a fourth creature from that original myth that is not represented here. At least not yet. Ranatosker the squirrel is said to climb up and down the tree, delivering messages from Hresfelger at the top and Nidhogg at the bottom. In some interpretations of the myth, he's just a messenger, but in others, He's a little gossip. He's a, he's a little, little bit of a troublemaker, an instigator, always heading down to Nidhogg like, Girl, you are not gonna believe what Dvalin said about you now. You didn't hear it from me, but I heard that he called you a little... So if the pattern holds true, then this fourth A Pokemon would likely be based on Ratatosker the Squirrel, and it might not be quite as noble as the other three. Looking at the mythology of Pokemon, this makes sense. Xerneas represents life, and Eveltel is its opposite, death. Zygarde represents order, so its counterpart would have to represent disorder, chaos, disruption. Zygarde maintains balance, so this new A Pokemon would upset that balance. Like Ratatosker, it's an instigator, it's a rebel, it may even be the villain. It all fits together just right. Only, there's one problem. All of the other letters in the logo look like their corresponding legendary, but the A in this logo doesn't look like a squirrel. At all. In fact, it looks more like the tree. Based on the design, it seems like this A Pokemon, if it even is a new Pokemon, isn't based on just another creature that lives on Yggdrasil. It's based on just Yggdrasil. And if that's the case, then it wouldn't represent disorder, it would be the order that Zygarde is trying to preserve, the natural cycle between life and death. That's what Yggdrasil generally represents. But then what about Ratatosker? All those pieces fit together too well to just be a coincidence, right? Surely there has to be a disruptor of sorts. If Zygarde is meant to preserve the balance, then there has to be something trying to upset that balance. But if not this mysterious A Pokemon, then who? Perhaps you've spotted it already, dear viewer. The truth that's been staring us in the face this whole time. Ratatosker the Disruptor already exists in these games. It has since the very original. But it's not a Pokemon. It's you. Who are the ultimate disruptors of order? Who seeks to take the cycle of life and death into their own hands? What creature tries to bend nature to its will more than humanity. In this cosmology, humans 
play the role of Ratatosker the Disruptor, with their destructive wars, their defilement of life and death, and their destruction of nature to make way for their artificial urban expansion. But that would mean that in this game, you're the bad guy. I mean, after all, the Pokemon franchise and X and Y specifically have always been about respecting and embracing nature. So what bigger villain could there be than greedy, expansionist, industrializing humans? Think back to the first Legends game, Legends Arceus. On the surface, that game seems to be about embracing and studying nature, but if you take a step back, the Galaxy Research Team are colonists. Flash forward to the modern day, and these settlers have covered once natural landscapes with massive stone cities. They've begun to mine the mountains for resources, and the native Diamond and Pearl clans are nowhere to be found, their culture completely erased. And Legend ZA will follow in the same footsteps as we level lush forests for lumber and pave over natural habitats to make way for our own grand design. In Pokemon Legends ZA, you are the villain. Or maybe not. This is a kid's game after all, and making it a cautionary tale where you play as a megalomaniacal industrialist might not be the move. And the trailer does state that the goal of the Lumios redevelopment plan is to foster a coexistence between people and Pokemon. More realistically, you'll probably have to fight against the over-urbanization of Lumios. You're trying to build a city that coexists with nature, and some other group is working against you. Because you see, there is one small fact that I forgot to mention when talking about Haussmann's renovation of Paris. He did a lot of work to clean up the city, upgraded a lot of the infrastructure, and turned it into the world-famous City of Lights that it is today. But he was also a pretty controversial figure, to say the least. Because in order to make way for his picturesque boulevards, he basically erased all of the low-income neighborhoods in the area and displaced a bunch of lower-class citizens and basically told them, sorry, losers. I think this game will have a similar conflict, except with a greater focus on preserving nature and Pokemon's habitats as opposed to people's housing. So, to tie it all together, I believe that the story of this game will be as such. The game begins in Lumio City, circa 1850, but it's not the Lumio City that you're familiar with. It's pretty small, made up of densely packed, single-story wood and stone structures. It's crowded, it's mostly brown and gray, generally not the prettiest thing to look at. But it is surrounded by lots of nature, built on the banks of a river with a great big tree growing in the center. Some kind of magical or culturally significant tree called the Alpha Tree. Lumios has a bit of a population problem. The city center is completely packed and people have started to spill out into the surrounding wilderness, setting up smaller settlements and suburbs that are exposed to the elements and constantly having to contend with the wild Pokemon of the area. So the mayor of Lumios, let's say for fun, a descendant of this guy, decides that something needs to change. At a town council, he lays out his solution, the Lumios city urban redevelopment plan. We'll consolidate the city center and all the surrounding suburbs into one massive city, fill it with all the infrastructure and amenities that we could ever need, and turn this shanty town into the jewel of Kalos. As part of this plan, the mayor creates two factions. The first, led by an ancestor of Sycamore, will be the Recon Squad. 
Their job is to go out into the surrounding towns and wilderness to survey the land and learn more about the wild Pokemon that have been threatening the suburbs. The second group is the industrialists. They're the ones in charge of the actual building, gathering materials, drawing up blueprints, stuff like that. And their leader is an ancestor of Clement named Ecarile, which is French for squirrel. Do you get it? Do you, you get squirrel? Squirrel, he's he's the squirrel, this guy. He's he's the, the guy, we're the squirrel. He's, this is the bad guy right here. Foreshadowing. You play as just a kid who works for the town, mostly helping the recon squad catch and study Pokemon, but when you come back to base, you can donate various items and materials that you've gathered to help the industrialist too. There's probably also some subplot about mega evolution because, I mean, it's Kalos, and they want to sell you a bunch of Mega Charizard Z merch, let's be honest. At first, everything is going great, but quickly a rift starts to form between the Recon Squad and the Industrialists. Old Sycamore's group wants to find a way to build around the native Pokemon, to preserve their habitats and incorporate the surrounding nature into the city itself. But Ekaral the Industrialist has a vision for a city for humans and humans alone. He wants to drive the wild Pokemon out, level their habitats, and pave it all over to make room for his grand designs. As the game progresses and you explore the various zones around the city, Ekaral slowly builds up the city, growing more and more ambitious and ignoring all the warnings coming from the Recon Squad. You are able to make some compromises, like turning the natural river into a canal instead of damming it up like Ekariah planned so that water Pokemon can still get through, and preserving some of the natural land in the form of parks, but in general, Ekariah is going full steam ahead. He cuts down forests, he fills in marshes, he drives out droves of native Pokemon, all in the name of the perfect city. It all comes to a head at the end of the game, when he plans to chop down the great alpha tree in the center of the city and replace it with a huge office building, Ecarile Tower. When you find out about his plan, you rush back to stop him, but it's too late. You arrive just in time to see the alpha tree fall. At first, all is silent. Ekarile yells at his men to get back to work, but then the air is pierced by an ear-splitting, rage-filled roar. And you see, this was no ordinary tree. This tree was someone's home. Emerging from the roots is a massive green dragon, the legendary Zygarde. He looks at the humans before him who felled his great tree, and the massive city of stone that they've built over the once pristine landscape. Zygarde doesn't see two rival factions. He knows not of the conflicting visions for the city. He only sees hubris, chaos, disorder, and he's going to burn it all out. In the climactic final battle, Zygarde attacks, hell bent on leveling the city and everyone in it. You may not like Ekarile's idea for the city, but Lumios is still your home. So you stand up to Zygarde, and in a massive final boss battle, you and your Pokemon team defeat him. During your battle, Zygarde observes the way that you work together with your Pokemon companions, and in defeat, you come to an understanding. You show Zygarde that not all humans are like Ekarile, and you make a promise to him that you will turn this city into a place of harmony between humans and Pokemon. In his weakened state, Zygarde flees the city, taking shelter in the faraway Terminus Cave, waiting for another young hero to come find him. Ekarile is fired for, you know, accidentally summoning an angry god to smite the city down, and the Recon Squad is allowed to take over the development of the city. 
they construct a new tower where the Alpha Tree stood. Not for humans, but as a monument to honor the Pokemon of Lumios. And then the super secret endgame boss fight is against AZ. I have no evidence for that, but I mean, come on, that'd be super cool. But there you have it. With the help of real world histories and ancient creation myths, that is the entire plot of Pokemon Legends ZA uncovered more than a year before the game releases. Go ahead, Game Freak. Prove me wrong. This video was made possible by all my amazing patrons, including Alakazam, Big Dog Tie for the Win, Sidian, Sherry and Mark, Starjoy, The Boss Killer 94, and Alberung Freud and Seligan. If you want to support the channel more directly and get access to a bunch of cool perks like early access, check the link in the description down below.